that's when you know you made it. Yep. Is when you, <laughs> you have those straight fucking dudes that are like, blah, this is disgusting or whatever, whatever. That's when you know you fucking made it. <laughs> People are starting to bully me online. I've made it. Welcome to Queer Talk, the number one podcast to connect you to all of your favorite queer creators and a space where we share stories and all things queer related. My name is Brie Walker, Brie Logan on all platforms. And if you're not listening to this on Apple Podcasts and you're not subscribed, what you're doing, baby? You gotta hit that subscribe button. And if you're not listening to us on Spotify, give us a follow. We have an amazing guest on today. She is a good friend of mine. She's a TikToker. She's one of the gay bitches from Ohio. And uh, she has a sick fucking motorcycle. You can find her at that gay bitch from Ohio on TikTok. You can also search her Elise Pinter because sometimes you can't find her because she has bitch in her name. I've told her that. She should change it, but she doesn't listen to me. Um, <laughs> please welcome Elise Pinter. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me. I'm really excited. It's weird to be in front of the screen for once instead of editing, but yeah, really excited. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So if you guys didn't know, Elise is my editor. Um, she listens to all of the podcasts. So if she doesn't like anything in this podcast, it's going to get cut out. She has full creative control. Um, but yeah, she's a good friend of mine and she just recently popped the fuck off. And she has like 5.6 million views on her video. If you haven't seen it yet, it's when all of her gay siblings roll up and uh, they're coming out of the car and it, you probably have seen it because it has literally over 5 million views and she just popped off, but she always had good content and like, she was always like the little baby of the group, you know, with like little 15 K followers. And now she has more followers than all of us from that video. And she's finally getting the credit she deserves um but yeah tell me about that tell me about that because like i was hanging out with you while you were popping off how do you feel about that it was it was insane i i really it was one of those times like i know you as a as a creator it's those videos that you don't think anybody's really gonna like or like interact with at all that you you really don't put that much effort into that like those are the ones that blow up which is so crazy to me like yeah. i was just hanging out with my siblings we had all gone home to my parents' house for the weekend. And so we were all just hanging out. Uh, there were a couple, a couple neighbors over uh, for a barbecue and we all got a little bit bored. And I was like, hey guys, like, since it's a little, little bit boring right now, do you wanna, you wanna go make a TikTok? Do you wanna go like do some goofy stuff? Cause I like, I love my siblings. They're my best friends, they mean the world to me. And we don't get to see each other a lot because they live so far away. You know, we all live in different states. We only have the weekend. So I was like, do you guys wanna, kind of ditch and go do something goofy and fun like, like we used to do when we all lived at home so we went and we just made this goofy tiktok like trying to be cool walking out of the car and i just put some captions on it uh and it it blew the fuck up and i had no idea that that was gonna happen i posted it right before i went out on like friday night and then the next time i looked at my phone uh, i had like 200 new followers and like the video was blowing up and it was it was just insane so it was really exciting, though. But yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> Did Mima buckle up? Because she needs to fucking buckle <laughs> up with all of you gangbangers. <laughs> so, okay, I, I had talked about this on my live a little bit. Mima is actually, I like to change names a little bit in my TikTok. So Mima is not actually my grandmother. Uh, <laughs> I was hinting at somebody else in my family. Okay. She better buckle up, because <laughs> we're, we're coming in like a whirlwind for sure. <laughs> The gays don't come to play. Um, Definitely do not, ever. But that's cool. So many people were, they loved your video just because it was a funny video, but also because it was a family video and it was wholesome, but also kind of edgy too. And like, people were like, man, I wish I had gay siblings. Like, oh, like that's so cool. What was that like growing up with all your siblings being in the LGBTQ plus community? Like, obviously, when you, when you grow up, when you're younger, you don't really know. And it was kind of like, we always knew something was kind of up. But when you're younger, you don't really have a word for it, yeah. you know? So I remember when I was younger, my parents, like, we were all at dinner. And my parents got a letter in the mail from, like, our Parks and Rec department where we lived. And, and it was about fall baseball. And they were like, hey, Noah, do you want to play baseball? And my brother was like, no, I don't want to get dirty. And then I said, I want to play baseball. And, uh, and they were like, do you, well, there's, a, there's one for girls. It's called softball. Do you want to play softball? And I said, no, I want to play baseball. It was one of those things that, like, being younger, you don't have a word for it. There's something, though. Like, there's something a little bit 
different. So growing up, um, we kind of knew that. And then once we kind of all figured it out, it definitely like brought us closer together. 100% yeah. in the fact that like, we all are kind of facing the same struggles, like at the end of the day, as far as like being in a minority group. It, it's just it's crazy to have that level of support from somebody that you are already so close to that they can relate on such a level that a lot of people are not as lucky to have that. I know mm -hmm. I, I tried to read as many comments on that as I could. Um, there were just so many on the video, but I tried to read as many as I could. And it was, you know, it was really exciting to see that a lot of people were excited about seeing an entire family um, where all of the kids are in the queer community. Um, and then it was also kind of sad seeing a lot of people comment like, I wish this was my family or I wish somebody else in my family was gay. So there was definitely two sides there, but also it, it was mostly all good seeing that like, you know, they wish somebody in their family was gay also that they could talk to. It was really exciting seeing people that could relate. So overall, the, the response to the video was amazing. And I kept my siblings updated because neither of them have TikTok. And they were just as excited to see like such an embracing community. It was just awesome to have like the support at home, the support online come together. It was crazy. It was probably one of the most like insane moments of my life. <laughs> just yeah. seeing like everyone come together and be like, I love your family so much. We got a couple comments that were like, if these aren't my kids, I don't want them. And I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I also love my siblings that much. That's so. the best. And I think that we're kind of are along the same vein of that wholesome content because I feel like I've gotten a lot of that stuff too of because I've put my family members in and like a lot of my right. viral videos have had family members in it. And that just hits a chord with people. It, it doesn't just hit a chord with like the LGBTQ plus community, but even just the straight allies and and, and even the people who aren't allies, it's showing that it's normal and it's yeah. showing that it's a part of life and a part of families all across the globe. Get, getting that viral video, obviously that went to straight TikTok. Whenever you go past a couple hundred thousand, like you're going to get on straight TikTok and it's going to blow up. And so you're going to get that exposure to people who aren't normally seeing the queer community which is huge. It might not get you, I mean, it did get you followers, don't get me wrong, but like it, it might not get you like those like hardcore queer people all the time, but it, it'll get, it can get both sides. And I think sometimes it's good to have, even if you get hate on it, which I'm sure you might've had some hate on yours. I don't know. I yeah. didn't check the comments, but like, that's when you know, that's when you know you made it yep. is when you, <laughs> you have those straight fucking dudes that are like, Bleh, this is disgusting or whatever, whatever. And you're like, I made it. Like, that's when you know you fucking made it. <laughs> People are starting to bully me online. I've made it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely over, overwhelmingly, absolutely. It was, it was overwhelmingly positive and supportive, but there were, you know, there were, there's always going to be a couple people that are going to try to bring you down for literally just living your life. So there were a couple comments like that. Every time I saw one, uh, I just deleted the comment, blocked the account and moved yeah. on. I don't yeah. want to interact with it. That's not the type of energy I'm trying to bring to my page in any way, like fighting from either side, fighting within the community. I don't want that at all. So if I see a comment that is hateful towards somebody else, it's deleted. If it's hateful towards me specifically, I block the account and call it a day. Yeah, that's good. I never kept up with it, but I had on my last like viral video that I had, um, I had some people coming into my lives. I had like two people coming into my lives and this one person kept making accounts and they were making accounts that were my name, but like adding like three I's or like three E's and they just kept creating accounts as I kept blocking them and they kept coming into my life. It was ridiculous. It was people are crazy. I'm so I had sorry. to report them. And yeah. so obviously like TikTok was like, oh this isn't spam. That's and then they were like, oh we're penalizing them, penalizing them. And I'm like, well they just kept creating accounts. So it's not like yeah. it matters. But like I feel like I had to because I'm like this is harassment. And yeah. it made me feel weird and uncomfortable because they were obviously harassing me on these lives. I haven't really done them since, not because I'm scared, but just because, I don't know, I've stopped doing them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> lives are definitely like a whole different side of TikTok that like I, yeah. I just started doing yeah. um, after the video blew up because I was kind of like, nobody is going to want to see me like sit on my couch and talk. And like, it is weird that like people do. Like it's, do. it's so... It's so crazy. I'm like, you, you honestly care what I have to say? Like, that, 
that's insane. Yeah. But like there, I mean, at least on all of my lives, like luckily I've been able to have a different experience than that. But yeah, all of these people coming in asking for advice and like just wanting to talk and like hang out. And, I mean, it's definitely a totally different side of TikTok that I had never experienced before because I was too scared to <laughs> go live. But it, it it is a lot of fun when everybody's nice and everybody's like, in that same supportive frame of mind. And it's those more true, those truer followers that are like, I relate to that so hard and I'm going to get on her live and I'm going to send her gifts, right. follow her Instagram, send her a message on Instagram, you know? And like when I saw, cause I hopped in on your live um, <laughs> on one of the points and like, yeah, you like had people in there and like, that's what happens when you have a viral video. Like you're more likely to be seen. I think when you go to your, you know, activity page and you see people's lives, you're more likely because yeah. you're like popping off. So you're like showing in. So more people are likely to get in, which is awesome, which is right. a great way to like build your community from those big videos. But yeah, yeah it was super cool to see that. I saw all of that. And I'm like, oh my God, go Elise. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my first live after, uh, after not being, you know, the, the little baby creator anymore. So that was really exciting. Yeah. And it, it helps you get like exposed to like crazy things too people yeah. can like send your account and like send your lives to other people like I got I checked Instagram and like I connected my Instagram to TikTok and so a lot of people have been able to go there I've gotten messages about like hey do you want to promote music or can you promote this app or like all of this and it's it's just crazy the exposure you get from like posting videos and then going live and somebody can send that live mm -hmm. to somebody else and it's it's just insane it's super nuts. I didn't know they could do that. I had my grandpa on one of my lives and that was like the best live I had because he was literally playing music. And I'm like, I, I don't really pull those numbers. Like I usually will have like maybe 15 upwards of 20 or something. He pulled 75 people <laughs> like at people one time because they he was playing your... music and like being entertaining. And I'm like, that's all I need to have a, a good successful live is to have my grandpa <laughs> play music and me just sit there like, <laughs> People, people aren't there for you. They're there for your grandpa. <laughs> they really are, though. And, like, this guy was sending him gifts and was like, make sure you get this to him. And I was like, well, you got to at least give me 50 bucks because I can't get it out of PayPal to give it to my grandpa unless you send me $50. He didn't send me $50. But I was like, I will give him $50 if, like, I will give it all to him. I don't give a shit. He won't let me, but I'll do it somehow. I'll take him out to dinner. But uh, how was that for you growing up with gay siblings? Like, who came out first? My brother, we call him Bo. My brother in eighth grade, I'm not sure why this was the time that he decided that he was gonna, he was gonna tell us. Um, in eighth grade, he took a shower and he came out of the shower. He was still like dripping wet. He was in a towel and he went into my parents' room and then he came into my room and he just stood there and was like, I'm gay. And I was, I was like, <laughs> like a baller, like a fucking yeah, baller. Yeah. Like there was no lead in. There was, there was nothing. Just came in dripping wet in his towel, fresh out of the shower, ungay. And I was like, oh, okay. Gave him a hug and that was it. There we go. <laughs> and then he went and got changed. And that's, that's really all there was to it. And he was, he was the first one, which is odd because he's the youngest. Yeah. You know, but, but uh, my, my man knew and he was wasting no time. <laughs> but that's awesome. Um, I feel like that's so brave, like to see a younger sibling come out before you. They're yeah. like, damn, they have less years on me, but they're so fucking fearless. <laughs> like, wow. yeah. My, my brother definitely is. He is one of those people. He does not care what anyone thinks. He, he knows what he's about and, and that's it, which honestly is probably one of the most admirable things about him like he is he's so smart and he's so kind but at the end of the day he knows who he is and that's it you cannot tell him otherwise which is such an admirable trait i think nothing phases him that's amazing um, but yeah yeah I, I love him so much got to spend all of quarantine with him so that was that was really cool because i haven't been able to see him really uh since he started college a couple of years ago he's going to be a senior so it was really good to have i mean quarantine sucked obviously yeah but it was it was really awesome to be able to spend time with my little brother again oh yeah for sure i mean that's amazing i think we all wish we had a gay little brother i mean <laughs> damn i don't have a brother but if i did i wish they were gay <laughs> that is the move Honestly, though, he, he acts like an older brother all of the time. Yeah. Like, he'll, he, he'll tell me if I'm being too much or, like, he drives us places and 
he, he definitely is much more mature than I was at that age or probably still am. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you also have a sister too. And if I'm not mistaken, your sister's bi, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, she's older. Yeah. So we're all two years apart. So she's two years older than me and he's two years younger. Her and I are kind of similar in the fact that like, there wasn't really a moment that we were like, hey, I'm not straight. Yeah. It was kind of just, we both started to just live lives as non-straight people, gotcha. which, you know, uh, as much as I admire my brother for being so confident at such a young age, being like, hey, I'm gay, that's who I am. It was, you know, at least for me, um, and I think for my sister as well, like, it was really cool to have a family where you didn't need to say, hey, I am not straight. You could just start living your life and, and being with whoever you wanted to be with. Um, so we are definitely lucky in that aspect that I know a lot of people, that's something they struggle with, non-supportive families, or they have to come out. People won't just, you know, let them be. They need to have a label. Um, so that was something that we were really lucky to have. And I think, you know, my my little brother kind of kind of softened the blow for that as far yeah. as like having a gay child or having two or having three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so that was, it was, it was really cool. We didn't, as far as I know, um, cause she never really told me it was just, you know, she started dating certain people that a straight person doesn't date. Yeah. Uh, and it was kind of the same way for me that, you know, I just started dating girls and that's yeah. what happened. That's amazing. I mean, that's kind of like the dream where people don't really have to come out and they just are like, they just are, yeah. they just date whoever they want to date. There's nothing, there's nothing shocking or surprising about it. And it's just very, it flows just like typical, Hey, I have a crush on this boy or Hey, this boy, you know, whatever. It'll just be right. like that, which is what people want. Yeah. Obviously, like, I think that's how it should be. I don't think that there should need to be this moment in life where you need to announce to the world who you want to sleep with. Straight people don't do that. Why should we have to do that? And I think it is becoming more and more acceptable to not have to do that and to mm -hmm. not feel the need to do that. But again, like, I was really lucky growing up in a family that I didn't need to specifically. So I don't know. I mean, everybody's journey is different. Everybody's in a different situation. But that definitely is the dream, I think, just to be able to live your life and not have to explain why. Yeah. And I feel like some people probably would be okay doing that. Like, when I look back, I mean, I definitely wanted to come out because that's just what I knew everybody else did like you you know and so I planned kind of how I would do it and stuff like that but I feel like if I was like hey I have this crush on this girl hey I'm gonna bring this home I don't know if my parents my parents wouldn't have like flipped out they would have been like okay this is different yeah. we're gonna roll with it you know <laughs> roll with the punches <laughs> I think I put that on myself I think a lot of it because I felt like yeah. I needed to do it. And it might have just been because I needed to do it for myself to just be liberated in, in that decision and to voice it to other people, not just myself. But some people don't want to do that. Like I just shot a podcast episode with another uh, person. Her name's Katie. And they're on TikTok too. And she was telling me that like coming out was queer ancestors that started that like coming out as a form of liberation, but a lot of people think it's a burden. That's what she kind of thought it was too. So I think it's kind of like some people want to do it because they yeah. find comfort in like coming out and, and that, and some people don't. They're like, I want a clean slate, this and that, which I don't agree or disagree with any one of them. I want my kids right. to have a clean slate and I want them to do that. But for yeah. me, I kind of found solace. I kind of, it was really hard to come out and it was really hard to do it. But I feel like once I did it, I felt really good about it. I mean, I, I definitely get that. I think, honestly, like, I haven't really thought about it from, like, the liberation point of view, but I can definitely see why that would be such a liberating feeling, yeah. like, verbally saying it when, you know, we all go through that journey of trying to figure it out, and when you finally arrive there, being able to just come out and say it, I can understand why a lot of people would find that very liberating. Yeah. So that's, that's interesting. I am definitely one of those people that, like, view it as a burden on the queer community uh -huh. but again like everyone views it differently so that's, that's definitely interesting I, I think it's where you're at with it too and your upbringing and things like that like because like I said I want I want that for my kids I want to have a clean slate I don't want them to right. have to do that I, I don't feel like like I want them to be like having this coming out part or like anything like that I just want them to be themselves for me I, I felt like I had to do it you know like it was something like I had to do and I, I didn't feel like 
I could just kind of roll out and say, even though I could have, I just felt like I needed to declare it and be like, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. It doesn't make it You're, right or wrong. Everybody uses it differently. Old, I'm going to cry about <laughs> it anyways. <laughs> That's definitely interesting. With your sister being bi, I know there's a huge conversation right now trending about bisexual versus pansexual and uh, the definitions of it and things like that. Like, what's kind of your take on that? And has she like said anything about it? Do you have any kind of insight on that kind of conversation? Yeah, um, absolutely. Like growing up with somebody who definitely like they go through that journey. I feel like um, the bisexual journey is, is very different than the lesbian or gay journey because, you know, you're fighting that ingrained heteronormativity on like, you know, they're just girl crushes or. Yeah. And, and then you're also on the other side, like. I don't know, is, is this really what I want? Like, there's two sides that you're constantly fighting with on that. Um, but growing up with a sister that identifies as that type of individual, it definitely, um, it definitely helped. It, it got me to look into it a lot more. I know my sister in the past has struggled with, she doesn't feel like one of the labels really identifies her. Yeah. Um, so I know for a long time, um, she identified as just queer. She has started to use bisexual a lot more I've noticed and I it's one of those things that again I'm of that mindset of you know you don't need to tell me you just live your life however it's going to make you happy and that's how it is so I mean maybe I should ask one of these days yeah but you know she has definitely referred to herself as bisexual most often recently but there is that huge debate on what bisexual versus pansexual means there's the mindset that bisexual is cis men and cis women only because bi means two yeah and pan is everything else that's one mindset the other mindset is you know as we journey more into acceptable sexuality and culture you know those words evolve so the other side of that is bi doesn't mean two anymore it has evolved to mean multiple genders and pan means all genders. So that okay. is definitely a huge debate that I saw on the video that uh, that just blew up. Like I said, I try to read all the comments and people were going back and forth fighting about what bi means. And I was like, this is not the point of the video, but go off, I guess. Um, pop off. Okay. Pop Freedom off. of speech. Yeah. Pop off. Right. They're, they were fighting about that because those seem to be the two like major schools of thought there on what bi versus pan means. And that's something in the queer community that I really, really don't like is that lateral aggression and lateral violence in the community fighting yes. with each other. To me, it makes no sense. It's kind of like taking one step forward, two steps back. We are being marginalized and oppressed all over the globe by people not in the community. Let's not do that to ourselves. Um, so I'm definitely very much of the mindset of, you know, let people identify however they want. Because that's, at the end of the day, that's what we all want. You don't want anyone to judge you for identifying a certain way. Why are you judging them for identifying a certain way? You know, you can have your private thoughts on it. But in, when you're interacting with others, you know, our, our community is about acceptance. Yep. I think just at the core, you need to accept somebody for what they say their sexuality is. They don't need to prove it. They don't need to cite their sources. If they say they're bi or they're pan, you know, that's, that's what they are. That's how they identify. But yeah, that's, um, it's definitely a huge, huge debate that I was seeing in my comments and like on other videos, you know, what that means exactly. And that's, that's not my experience, you know, I'm, I don't identify as bisexual or pansexual or like scoliosexual or anything like that. Like I'm a lesbian, I know I'm, a, I'm attracted to women and that's it. So yeah. it's, it's not something that I usually have to argue with people. Um, so I do feel for the bi and pan community that always feel the need and anyone in between that feel the need that they need to defend who they yeah. are. But yeah, it's a huge debate. There was a lot, a lot of comments about it that I really didn't expect. I mean, I didn't realize because like, that's what I thought too with with bi was it was bi. Bi means two fell within the confines of the gender binary where you had cis men and cis women and that's it. And then you had pansexual, which was like everyone and their mom, um, which is great. We love that. We love moms. We love MILFs. Let's fucking go. Uh, we're all good here. But that's how I thought about it. And so 
now it's like it's bi as all gender or some genders. You said bi is some genders, and it, then yeah, pan well, it, is all gender. So what are the some? I'm like wondering what isn't included in bisexual or what is, you know, not attracted to somebody. What is? What do they not like that the pans like? Honestly, I mean, like I said, like, that's not a journey that I've ever been on. And I definitely, same as you for a long time, I held that school of thought that like, bi means two. So cis men, cis women, pan includes trans women, trans men, non-binary, gender fluid, all of that. But, you know, reading all of these comments and, and then after that, like doing my own research on it, Unfortunately, I can't give you an answer as far as bi, meaning multiple genders, like where's the cutoff on that? And I think that, you know, gender, gender identity, sexuality in the queer community is just so fluid that it really is hard to draw a hard line here, especially like with everyone having their own opinions, their own views on it. Wow acceptance and sexuality in the community is continually evolving it's really hard to draw that fine line on you know this means this this means that yeah. bi is two bi is multiple like it's it's yeah. ever evolving and ever changing so it is really hard so i think like i said like at the end of the day if somebody identifies a certain way don't argue with them about it yeah. they've obviously been on this journey even if you have also, you've gone through different things, you've experienced different things, you've researched different areas, like just, just let somebody live their life. It's, we're all about acceptance. And if we're not accepting each other, how can we expect people outside of our community to accept us? So I agree. I mean, that's, I don't acceptance have a- Acceptance is intersectional answer, but, and you can't have yeah. lateral aggression, like you said, within a group that's already oppressed with right. people who are more oppressed than others. You know, we all have privileges, even if we are a part of an oppressed mm -hmm. group, right? So what are your thoughts on, and this is something that I've just recently rediscovered, but what about he, him, lesbians? So like, what are your thoughts on he, him, lesbians? Yeah, that is, um, that's definitely a topic that up until recently, I was very, very confused about. I actually, uh, somebody dm'd me on tiktok and they were like hey like i really like your videos um and I, I do try my best to like inform people on on things as much as i can they were like i really like your videos uh would you mind explaining he him lesbians i'm really confused about it and the more i research it the more confused i get and at the time you know i, I replied to this person and i was like i totally get what you're saying because i've also tried to research it and it is really confusing the more you research it the more confusing it gets because like i said like gender identity gender expression like it's ever evolving it's ever changing and it's so so fluid but i was able to like really find what i found to be a, a credible source um this woman named jen wilson she's an anthropologist sociologist you know she said i'm no sexologist but here's here's what i could find on this so historically pronouns were viewed less as identifiers and more as a form of expression it, it's kind of like uh when you go to a drag show and the queen's up on stage we refer to the queen as a she right yeah. Like, oh, she's, she's slaying, she's killing it. Mm -hmm. And then when they get out of drag, we don't refer to that individual as a she anymore. Now it's a he. Yeah. In that moment, they are expressing their gender in a certain fashion. And I think that confuses a whole lot of people because now we are getting into a time when transgender people are becoming more accepted. And part of being transgender is, you know, you identify as a gender that you were not born as. Yeah. So having those pronouns identifying you as, hey, I am not this gender, I am this gender, mm -hmm. having those pronouns becomes really, really, really important to that specific community. And that's why, you know, he, him, lesbians, historically valid. Yes, they, they have been there. They're still there. A lot of people in the trans community do get very, very frustrated by it because they okay. feel invalidated. So it is, again, it's fluid. It's ever changing. There's multiple viewpoints from all different perspectives. But yeah, I mean, that's what I could find on it historically is that it, it was traditionally seen as a form of gender expression, not gender identity. And now it's changing in society that gender identity is something that certain people struggle with. You know, when they find themselves and they're saying, no, I am confident, this is my gender, please refer to me as these pronouns, that's their identifier. 
And yeah. so they do feel invalidated <clears throat> when a lesbian who identifies as female is totally fine identifying that way goes by he, him pronouns. So I, I do understand both sides, absolutely. So at the end of the day, it's, again, just, just let people live. Yeah. No, I totally get that. And I mean, I'm going to play devil's advocate because I yeah, like playing devil's advocate. But <laughs> <You> uh, <do. laughs> I, I love it. I love it. Uh, <laughs> but like, I feel like some people and especially just lesbians in general would get triggered by that because it seems to them maybe that it might be just a cis straight man who's into women who's calling themselves a lesbian but hasn't really gone through the pain and the throes of being a woman who's already oppressed and then becoming a part of the gay community. So you got twofer, you got a twofer there, and it's almost like they kind of kind of bypassed it. Right. You know, it could almost seem like privilege and it could almost seem like they're appropriating the term lesbian. You know, like it's right. not enough to be like a cis straight man. Like you got to be like a lesbian too. Like, and I'm not saying that I agree with this statement at all, but I, like I said, just playing devil's advocate. Like, I feel like that could be triggering for, for people to be like, what the fuck? Like another thing that you're going to try to appropriate similarly to how the, you know, white community appropriates black culture, but doesn't give a fuck about black culture it only gives a fuck right. about the, co the cool fun things that are trending yeah. you know yeah no i definitely I, I definitely understand where that's coming from i would say as far as this he him lesbians who identify as female they were born female they're comfortable staying in their female life those are definitely different from i think what you're talking about with these cis men who are saying I'm a lesbian you know okay. the the ones that um I was talking about the he him ones using gender expression just like binding their chest or, or wearing more masculine clothing I definitely think they have grounds to say you know I, I choose to express my gender however I please yeah um you know that's their experience as far as um really like a, a cis man who's attracted to women saying he's a lesbian i i'm really not sure about that one i'm not yeah. gonna lie it seems um i i can definitely understand why some lesbians are saying you know that's that's appropriation you're you're a cis man attracted to women so that would make you straight and you're saying you're a lesbian for what you know, so I, I definitely yeah. do get that that side of it, um, and I think that's something I'll definitely have to educate myself on more. But yeah, that is, I, I definitely get the frustration there from a lot of lesbians on that. And maybe it's just because of the L word. So listeners, if you guys know this episode, it's when Alice is dating this guy. I feel like his name is Lisa. And she introduces him. Obviously, Lisa can be a, a man's name, too. That stuff doesn't matter, obviously. But he describes himself as a lesbian. But he's a cis straight man that's a lesbian. And everyone just kind of gives him weird looks and, like, doesn't validate him being a lesbian. And she doesn't even validate him being a lesbian. And part of me is like, oh, that sucks. Like, he's such a nice guy. Like, you know, he's not hurting anybody. But at the same time, it's like, aren't you just a straight dude? Like, I, I, you just may be a little more effeminate, which is totally fine. There's so many effeminate straight guys. It's not a big deal. But, like, I'm very torn. I'm like, what, what's going on, you know? It, but maybe yeah. he is affecting people because he's triggering people because he's right. appropriating. I don't know. I don't know. Not being as educated on this specific topic as I would like to be, it's hard to take a stance. But I will say, like, just hearing that, hearing a cis man who's attracted to women say he's a lesbian like it's kind of frustrating to me maybe it's because i'm not educated on the topic i'll definitely look more into it but like i 100 percent get why you know that feels invalidating to people yeah and why people would get upset about that like being a lesbian it's an experience that you have to go through you have to figure it out it's it's something that affects your everyday life whether you are actively being oppressed or it's just harder to find a date for Saturday night, you know, it's not as easy as being straight. It's just not. I think everybody in the queer community can agree with that. Being in the queer community makes your life a little bit harder, Yeah. you know, for a multitude of, of different reasons. But yeah, I, I definitely get why somebody who really is not oppressed for that reason, you know, for who they love, wanting to adopt a label. I, I understand why that was, why that's frustrating to a lot of lesbians. But I totally get, like, if you have, you know, a woman who's trans identifies a lesbian, it's like, oh yeah, like they are a woman who is mm -hmm. into other women 
So right. therefore, you know, they have transitioned to be a woman. They are obviously they've always been a woman right. in between the eyes and they're finally expressing it. And that's great. And, and they're biologically male still attracted to women. And now they're still attracted to women, but because they're a woman attracted to, to women, then they identify as a lesbian. That's totally fine. Um, yeah. I don't yeah. have a problem with Absolutely. that because it's not appropriation. And also it's, you're part of the qu- queer community, you know, right. if you're non-binary or, and you also go by lesbian, I feel like that's cool. If you're gender queer, that's cool. I think what triggers me is like someone who isn't a part of it, who hasn't gone through the questioning of their sexuality and their gender. And like, and it it just seems like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like they went through the pain to be able to call themselves a lesbian. (laughs) And (laughs) they didn't work hard. They didn't work for it, man. They're not, they're not a part of any oppressed group. We worked hard to get to our sexuality, okay? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want hundred percent get that because it's not like we, we pride ourselves on having to struggle. But I think it's totally valid to say, hey, like you know, my community struggles in certain aspects with coming to terms with ourselves, coming out to our families and friends, like. It is a struggle sometimes for a lot of people and to have somebody come in and really there's no need for them to go through that. Yeah. To kind of just decide like, hey, I want to be a part of this. Like, and I don't even know. Maybe there it's very little and it, it's not that at all. And maybe the L word just did that to, to make it funny. But like when you said he, him, lesbians, I was like, Lisa from the L word. <laughs> That's the only time I've ever heard of that in my entire life was a character on a TV show that was in from the early 2000s. That isn't even accurate and correct and politically correct nowadays and had a lot of things wrong with it anyways, but it was just a queer staple, you know, movie yeah. TV show. Well, so. honestly, the first time I had ever heard of a he, him, lesbian was online. Like somebody's bio said okay. he, him, lesbian. And I, I will say, I kind of, I, I immediately jumped into that aggressive mindset of like, what do you mean? That makes no sense to me. Lesbian is woman and woman. What does that mean? So I definitely think it's one of those things that like, it's a complicated topic. I think. I, <laughs> I, I mean, can you be non-binary, go by he, him and be a lesbian? Can you be uh, a trans woman and be a lesbian, but go by he, him. I mean, cause I would be cool with that. It doesn't typically fall into the categories when you transition to be a woman, you typically want to be she, she, her right? and non-binary right. people go by a bunch of different things. Sometimes they go by what they've always gone by and then, and they, them, or just they, them, or, or that kind of thing. So like, maybe it's just it, that fit for them and everything else kind of went, you know, the other right. direction. I don't know. Right. I mean, that's... I'm okay with that, though. I'm okay with that. I think I'm just not okay with what we originally discussed. Yeah. Yeah. I think... Because I think you and I are both of that very, very accepting mindset of, like, you're part of our community, however you want to identify, who you want to love. Exactly. Whatever. Like, you live your life. We support you. And I think, yeah, it's... I think you and I are definitely stuck on that whole, like, this is a cis man saying he's a lesbian because he's attracted to women. Like I just, something about it doesn't sit right. Something doesn't sit. Yeah. It doesn't sit (laughs) right with me. Yeah. That's the only thing that doesn't sit right with me. Anyone else can do it. Anyone in the queer community, do whatever the fuck you want. But like, I don't judge anyone in our community. (laughs) It's outside though. is a different story. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like you're trying to be more interesting. Cause I know straight (laughs) people will be fucking boring as shit. (laughs) watching Grey's Anatomy, and you gotta, I don't know, you're like, Where's the flavor? Where's the flavor? Let me add a little bit of spice to this. (laughs) I'll be a straight man and call myself a lesbian. (laughs) That's that's not flavor. (laughs) Wrong type. That's the wrong spice you're throwing in there. We needed some nutmeg. You threw in, like, oregano. Yeah, and I kind of view it as, like, a... Tom Pritchard, nice to meet you, and he's (laughs) just the soup, the whitest guy ever who thinks that he can throw around like the soft N word just because it's in mm. music to make him feel cool. And I'm singing these cool yeah. songs, but like I don't do anything for the black community and I don't actually care about the stuff that they're going through, but man, their music is fucking dope. Let me say it feel cool, but not acknowledge like the pain yeah. and all of the history behind the word and like why you can't say it and why it's appropriation and like all that. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's definitely an interesting topic for sure. Yeah.
Like, Tom, you can have two beers and eat your bland spaghetti dinner that your wife made you, but you cannot call yourself a lesbian. <laughs> I mean... Or say the soft N-word. Can't do it. You can't do it. You just can't. You can't do it. I'm sorry. Can't do it. So another thing I wanted to talk about, and this was something that a bunch of us, the gay bitches of Ohio, we literally, we got together, we were eating tacos down in Cincinnati, and Elise popped off at this, and like a bunch of us, like if you know Shay, she's on the episode, like we both looked at each other, and we we're like, oh my god, like she's popping off, like, because <laughs> like, you're pretty, you know, like, I wouldn't say meek or anything like that, but you're, like, you're pretty chill, and you just like went like ham on this subject. <laughs> we were talking to Elise, and we were just, you know, typical friends want to know what's going on in her love life and stuff like that, and she's super private, and we weren't trying to be like assholes about it, but like, we just wanted to know, because we are we wanted to know as friends, and she was like, consent moves past physical you have to have consent even when you're talking about another person and the experiences that you had. And I literally, I didn't even, it wasn't even something that came across my mind to a, a big degree. When I thought about it, I'm like, okay, like it depends on the degree. If it's a hookup, like I feel like it's free reign unless they say otherwise, you know, it's like, unless someone says, Hey, like don't mention this or Hey, can we keep this private or Hey, I'm not out yet or like whatever, like totally. Mm -hmm. But I never really thought of it in an instance of if they don't say anything and you just kind of assume like, oh, they're such an outgoing person. Like they don't really seem to like give a fuck about that stuff. And I don't either. Like I'm okay to talk about some things and like kind of feel it out inside what you think is okay. And you were just like, no, bitch, you got to get consent when you talk about things. If you're being intimate with someone. And I didn't think about it. And I, it caught Shay and I off guard because Shay and I are just so just like no filter. We talk about anything. And it was nice to have an angle of like some people are super private and maybe they didn't say anything, but like maybe it is, maybe you should ask like, hey, can I tell my friends like vaguely about what happened or have those kind of boundaries. So like when you popped off, like what kind of triggered you? So, I mean, we were all there um, having tacos, having a good time having some margs. <laughs> um, I tend, tend to get passionate when I get a marg or two in me. <laughs> um, and you guys, you and Shay specifically are very, very open about, about that kind of stuff, which like obviously no shame at all. But, and like, we're obviously friends and we talk about a lot of like stuff like that, you know, like things that friends talk about. But I am, like you said, I'm a very, very private person when it comes to that. So I think you guys were trying to figure out what was going on with me in a certain situation. Uh, <laughs> like I'm being so vague. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being incredibly vague. You guys were like asking me like, you know, what's going on and blah, blah, blah and all this stuff. And, and I don't know why. I'm sorry if I was rude about it. <laughs> you weren't. But you weren't rude this, at all. We were like, yeah. yeah, hell yeah, she's popping off. Let's fucking go. Like, Shay was like, pop off, bitch. Like, pop off. We're like, yeah, we wanted to hear you. <laughs> you guys are super supportive, so I do appreciate that. But yeah, you guys were, like, just asking basically about what was going on with me in a certain situation. Um, and I, I know I kind of popped off, and I was just like, you know, consent in the act itself is so important, but consent moves beyond the actual act of whatever you're doing. You know, that person consented to do whatever happened with you. And I think mm -hmm. sex is, it, you know, it's, it is very, it's, it's liberating now. Like people talk about it much more openly and, yeah. and people have sex without being married, obviously now, like when it used to be so taboo, like it is definitely an open and liberating topic now. But you know, when it comes down to it, sex is intimate. It's you and another person. The act itself takes consent. And I truly, like, I, it really, to me, you know, it's an intimate thing that you and another person have. If you want to keep that private and they want to keep that private, then that's, you know, that's the end of it. You guys don't talk about it. But if that hasn't been explicitly stated, like, hey, don't say anything about this, I don't think it's okay really to assume that this person is okay with you talking about it. You know, whether they're in the room or they're not in the room, like, it's a, for me, it's a respect thing. You can ask any of my past exes, like, I, am huge on consent even like when we're dating like yeah. it's it's a huge thing for me and i just think because it's such a big deal to me consent wise that like it has in my mind stretched further yeah. um and the more i think about it honestly the the more sense it makes to me like 
you know, they consented to do whatever happened with you mm-hmm. and you guys can talk about it or you cannot yeah. talk about it, but they didn't consent to anything with another person at all, yeah. you know? So I think talking about it, giving details, like for me, at least that's not something I'm comfortable with. Mm-hmm. The person I'm with didn't sign up for that. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to say anything cause I don't know how they feel about it 90% of the time, because usually after anything that happens, you're not like, Hey, so who can I tell? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's not a conversation that usually happens. Uh, it's a very intimate thing. That person consented to be intimate with you and nobody else. Uh, so I think it is definitely, a, it's one of those things that like, you know what they say about assuming, you know, yeah. and I don't want to assume anything about anyone. So I just, you know, I'm a very private person. I mean, obviously, you know that I'm a very private person and I don't want somebody talking about anything that I've done with another person. Uh, So I Mm -hmm. just try to extend that courtesy, like the gold rule, uh, treat people how you want to be treated. So for me, that's something that I try to stick by, like, don't talk about it unless they've said, yeah, you can talk about it. And it's something that was so... Like it, it caught me off guard and it made me feel a little bad because I'm like, I, I personally just wanted to know just to see how you were doing. And because it's fun, you know, I'm like, Oh, I want to know how yeah. you're doing with so-and-so or whatever. Not that I like need to have the dish to like gossip to someone else. It's just What's like, fun. it's always fun. You know, yeah. I would never want to make you feel uncomfortable. And like, I was just like, it, it also hit me and I was like, dang, man, I never like, I never thought about that. And it was interesting because I had a long relationship where I ha- was with someone who really, you know, at least at the beginning, the first few months, like really needed that consent. Like before every, like anything right. was, with, and I, and I was so cool with it. Like I, I did it from the jump, you know, and I think because mm-hmm. I felt that, like I, I felt yeah. her energy and I had to ask, I wanted to make sure that I asked for certain things. So like I had that experience where I had had that. So even though I had that knowledge of that and like did keep a lot of stuff private and did this I never it was never something where she said like hey I need you to do this or hey it wasn't like a conscious thought of like oh this doesn't extend past physical it was just kind of like an internal like you know like I can tell my friends that we had sex or I can tell but it's nothing I would never say anything relating to any details about it it would just be like sex you know nothing else but like it to verbalize it and make it an actual thing to be conscious about was something that I hadn't thought of so it caught me off guard when you said it but in a good way I was like wow I've never been consciously aware of extending it past just physical and not saying anything unless someone tells me or unless I get a vibe that it needs to be more private or it's something that wasn't a hookup wasn't just a casual fling it was something serious Look, if something's serious and you're in love with someone, like it's, I think it's different. You don't set, share certain things. Yeah. And if it's like a hookup, you're like, well, this fucking, you know, look at what happened here. I got this or this or finger pop, like, you know, whatever. And it's Wait nothing the weird. Wait church hear about this. Yeah. <laughs> but like if you get finger popped by someone that you're in love with and you're like, this is something I'm interested in and you can do it, you're probably not going to say, you're less likely to say something about it. Yeah. And, but like to give you and Shay credit, like, it was like the 180 was like immediate. Like you, you wanted to know, like you wanted to like talk to your friend about it. And as soon as I kind of was like, no, I'm private. <laughs> Here's why you guys were like, yes, no, absolutely. Yeah. Pop off. Of course. Absolutely. So like, of course. that was, that was greatly appreciated <laughs> instead of being like, come on, like tell us, which like yeah. nobody should be doing that. If people don't want to talk about something, don't try to make them talk about it. No, we would never put pressure on you. And we're all new friends too. Like we're, we're new friends. So we're still learning about each other. You know, we're learning yeah. about each other's backgrounds and things like that. We all mesh so well together that it we do. feels like so much longer. We do. And I mean, you hang out with Shay a lot more just because you guys live in Columbus. It, it's a learning process. I think that's the thing too. Like you got to learn people. Some people are more private than other people. And like, that's okay. You got to know people's boundaries. What's cool to say what's not cool to say some people you can't roast them too much you, some people if you don't roast them enough they're like bitch do you not like me like you, yeah. need, you need to be meaner to me shay definitely feels the love on that one we yeah, always roast a good her. roast, she, she, a good roast. She, and they easy. like to fucking roast me for my punctuality god damn it i am a punctual <laughs> person you guys fucking no. suck Every time we've hung out, you're at least 45 minutes late. 
But this is the thing. It's not like we are hanging out at this time. This is the time that we are hanging out. It's just, you guys are literally leaving from Columbus. You're like, we're going to get there around 7.30-ish. You text me at 7. You're like, where are you? <laughs> or like something like that. And I'm like, you said 7.30. And I had a lot of Stay on your toes, bitch. You got to be ready. Uh, and it's funny because <laughs> like, like every time we've hung out, I've either been like preparing for a vacation, preparing for a long distance fling to come hang out that I haven't seen in real life and I have to wash everything in my house to make it look like a new Mediterranean restaurant so she'll like me and like every some, everything something's going on and I'm usually so like chill with things that like I would be so punctual but every time we hang out I'm like uber busy somehow and or yeah. I haven't seen my roommates and I, and I need to see what's going on with them that's true you are always doing something that is really fair that one weekend we all hung out you and Sid and McKenna were all leaving for Florida, like, the next day after yes. we hung out. Shay and I came back to Columbus. Yeah. Like, just sitting in Ohio, trying to go to the pool, but it was closed. Like, <laughs> we don't do anything. So, we, me and Shay are ready to go. Yeah. So, when we text yeah. you we're going to be there at a certain time, be ready, like, a half hour before that because Shay drives like a goddamn maniac. If you give me a, a legit time to be there. Hard time. I, I, give me a hard time to be there. She won't. She'll give me, she'll say it's seven, 730, but really it's like eight. And then she'll be like, well, it's because I told you it's a half an hour before. Uh, you're going to be so pissed off if you're ever the first one there. I know. And everyone else is late, but then they do it on purpose. So it's basically I have no control. It doesn't matter if I'm punctual or not. I'm going to get fucked over either way. Nah, sorry. All right, Elise, we got lightning round. You want to answer some questions really fast? Hell yeah, let's go. Perfect. Cake or cupcakes? As long as it's carrot. I don't really care. Either one. That's weird. Okay. Texting or talking <laughs> on the phone? Uh, talking on the phone. Dog or cat? Bunnies. I'm allergic to cats. Dogs are a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Big spoon or little spoon? It depends. <laughs> I feel like I'm so bad at these questions. You fucking switch. Single, talking, or taken? I'm a very private person, Brie. <laughs> 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 okay, next question. Terrible at these. Favorite queer movie? I feel like it's cliche to say below her mouth, but below okay. her mouth. There we go. I don't like the movie, perhaps, but I like the actors and I like the fair. all the sex. Also, okay. Book Smart, if you've never seen it. There's a lesbian character in it. Love that movie. Flannels or Hawaiian shirts? Uh, I definitely used to be a flannel person. I'm definitely leaning more towards Hawaiian shirts as of late, though. Okay, yeah, summer, hot girl summer, um, <laughs> hot girlish summer, hot person summer. It's great. Uh, <laughs> we're being inclusive. <laughs> we we are we are. Last song you listen to on repeat? Last song I listened to on repeat, uh, "Thriving" by Ryan Caraveo. Giving presents or getting presents? I love giving presents. I awesome. love it. And last question. First celebrity you had a crush on? Probably Selena Gomez. Okay. <laughs> when, she, when she was like 15 and I was like six. <laughs> Wizards of Waverly Place? <laughs> yes. Hell yeah. I love that. Yeah. Me and Selena, thank you so much for being on this <laughs> podcast. Uh, if you want to check out more about Elise, you can find her on TikTok at that gay bitch from Ohio. You also might have to search her just at Elise Pinter because of the bitch in her name. Uh, as always, you can find me on all platforms at Brie Logan. If you enjoyed this episode, please drop us a rating on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a little written review. Help us get discovered by more queer people just like you. That's it for my this episode, my queers. Thank you for listening and subscribing. If you're not subscribed to Apple Podcasts, hit that subscribe button. Give us a follow on Spotify. Be you, be queer, stay safe, and we will see you on the next episode.